Imagine you're a multimillionaire. You invest in a franchise, in this case, Golden Corral. You spend millions of dollars building this franchise only to have it taken away from you in 51 days in less than two months. Our guest today, Sharance Henderson, is an ex-multimillionaire who tells us she's now forced to support her family on food stamps after having her franchise taken away. This truly is a crazy story. You might find hard to believe, but it's true. For the record, we contacted Golden Corral Legal Department as well as TD's Legal Department for their side of the story and did not receive a reply. And we welcome either of those organizations to reach out to us with their comments. Ross, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, no worries. Thank you, Robert, for having me. Great. So. Uh, before we get started, and we've given a little bit of an introduction as far as your your story and just uh, the, all of the crazy things that surrounded it, but I wanted to start off by asking, why did you go with Golden Corral? You know, what was behind that selection, and did you look at any other franchises before you decided to to sign up with them? Typical food franchises like the McDonald's, Burger Kings. I also looked at TGI Fridays, um, as well as Chick Fil A. Um, I looked at uh, daycare um, franchises. And I came back to the Golden Corral product because it was a place where my family could all dine. We were able to eat independent meals and follow Justin's gluten-free diet. Also, at that time, I believed that Golden Corral was a Christian company. It was a company that embraced my strong religious background or, or values. And it was always busy. So I thought it'd be a great match. Justin has autism, which is my oldest child. At that time, I didn't know that my second child would be artistic as well. But at that time, there was so much money being spent and I needed to grow revenue. And Golden Corral had uh, a name that was, uh, that was known to people. And I felt it was recession proof because it's food. Absolutely. Yeah. And their, their FDD, their, their financials, if everything goes right, they, they look pretty good comparatively. I mean, we see the Burger Kings, we see the McDonald's, we see the, you know, Chick-fil-A's and uh, Golden Corral doesn't look that bad as long as things go right, which they don't always do, as we'll find out. So uh, next question. And this kind of gets into the meat and potatoes of this, of this story. Um, before you invest, you're a multimillionaire, um, but you, you made the decision to go with Golden Corral, uh, despite the fact that, you know, you're running other businesses, you've got a publishing company, you've got books out there, you decided to reallocate those resources away from those businesses, which I'm sure is, is a regret right now, but you did that and you put that with uh, Golden Corral. What, what was behind that decision? What I believe income, artistic therapies are very, very expensive. Um, Justin, my oldest child is very artistic. He doesn't speak. Um, even today, he still wears pull-ups. Therapies are very expensive. And I felt that Golden Corral would give me the needed resources of additional income. So I would not basically be living off of what I had received from an awarded um, judgment in Newark, New Jersey. You see, I am also disabled. I have a spinal cord injury. And um, my walk is not perfect, but I'm walking and I'm grateful. And I was allowed it, allotted a certain amount of money, almost, I guess, $8 million. And I knew that if I kept on spending the way I was spending to help my son, Justin, reach his full potential, I would end up being penniless in like 25 plus years. I wanted to give Justin also an opportunity to have a job, you know, and to be in a safe environment. Golden Corral is a restaurant, and many times people with special needs work in the restaurant industry. I felt because Golden Corral is a family type of business, and they have strong religious and traditional family values, that it would be a great place not only to give great jobs to people in Newark, um, to have a stable income, and to be able to, to give Justin an opportunity to work when he becomes older. I thought it was a perfect match. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. And, you know, we'll get into the fact that you didn't end up in Newark in a minute, but before we go there, um, what was that process like? You engaged with Golden Corral, you start going through the process. How was that for you? Well, um, 
when I first met them, I was in my second trimester of being pregnant, um, walking with a cane. I met the senior vice president of franchise sales. I have become accustomed to my disability, but I know it can be a shocker that someone would want such a business in being disabled and pregnant at the same time. When I met um, the senior VP of Golden Corral Franchise Sales, he was shocked. Um, his face said it before his mouth, and then his mouth said it after his facial expression. Um, I was told that I should have a group, even though financially I was astute to handle the SBA loan. Um, I was cash heavy. I had almost 800 plus credit score. And I was worthy. I was, I was worthy to do it. Um, but I was told that I should have men on my license. I should have two partners and they should be men. Basically, that I was really shocked because that hasn't existed in over a hundred plus years. You know, yeah. in the 1800s, <laughs> I know, right? In the 1800s and the late, the early 1900s, women weren't allowed to own businesses, weren't allowed to own um, uh, land. They were only able to receive sometimes slaves in their own name by way of a, by way of death so it would be their inheritance they can own their inheritance but they could not purchase in their own name so basically what happened to me i went back to the 1800s and i wasn't worthy even though i was financially worthy and i had the credit strength to get an sba loan of that magnitude but i wasn't worthy because i was a woman Right. I should have stopped that, but I didn't. You right. know, I, yeah. What What was it that 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 kept you going? So, uh, you know, through that process. You know. So you're not you're in your second trimester. There's all these challenges. You're not getting the the warm and fuzzy feeling from from GC. How? Why didn't you walk away at that point? You know, I should have. Hindsight. Looking 2020. back on it, 2020. Right. Um. I. You know, I did not want to accept the bigotry and the prejudice. And I said, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. So it was having a, a positive um, feeling of resilience that I can do it. And I had to take care of my son. I had to take care of him because I'm a single parent. Without my assistance, my son would not have a fighting chance. You know, any parent that has a child with autism and any parent that loves that child with autism they're going to do whatever they need to do. And the words were offensive, but it wasn't a door closed. It was offensive. Also, it would give me an opportunity to make a positive impact to Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey, even now, is me. Newark, New Jersey helped me so much that I knew if I could have a business, make a positive impact on giving employment to people within the Newark community, it would make a difference. So I just ignored it and I said, I can do it. I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to go forward and I'm going to be the best franchisee that Golden Corral has ever seen. That was my motto. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I completely understood. But I did, get, but I did, but you know what? I did get two men for my license. So oh, I, I did do what they told me to do, but <laughs> You know, I, I was like, I, I got, I got it. I got it. I got to win. The goal was to win, Robert. The goal yeah, was you, to win. Do what you got to do for sure. I hear you there. I hear you there. Now let, let's go back to the whole Newark. Uh, Newark was what you wanted. Newark is, is where you're comfortable. Uh, they sold you Newark, but they wouldn't let you go to New York, New, Newark. Uh, you end up in Poughkeepsie, New York. How did that happen? Um, it hurts my heart because the demographics of Poughkeepsie is not representative of, um, of me or the community that I wanted to serve. Um, it was not an area that I chose. I was told to go to Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie, New York is a majority community, meaning that it's not a community of color. 
Um, it's a community that I have no relationships politically. It's a community where I have uh, no friends, no family. It's a community where it's very strange for me. Um, but I was told if you don't do it, after investing at that time almost $400,000, um, and every dime meant so much because that's the money I lived off of, you know, um, every single dime meant so much and I couldn't turn around. But at that point I should have taken the loss and turned around, but I went forward and, um, you know, what's so amazing when you get a franchise, you meet in front of what's called the community board. Right. And these people are the board members of the town that say, OK, we have to have the egress this way. We have to have sort of face this way. We have to have a traffic study. We have to have uh, we have to have the trees cut down before bat season. Right. And all of these surveys and all of these studies were not included in my loan. OK, so why the reason why I'm telling you this when I was at many of those meetings, I was the only black person in the room. I wasn't the only business, I was the only black person. I was the only black person that sat in the seat. I was the only black person that looked at people on the board. I was the only black person, not even the cameraman that videotaped me was of color. Right. Newark, New Jersey was a community where I knew. Um, you know, I really can't go too much into it because I'm an illegal bad Understood. Then Corral did a simple thing of a bait and switch. It was a bait and switch and they tricked me. So, you know. Understood. Yeah, got it. And we'll, we'll leave it at that and completely appreciate there's, you know, uh, an ongoing legal situation. Um, can you speak to, um, and we had an earlier conversation where you discussed that the TD Bank and Golden Corral sort of worked in tandem to uh, you know, allegedly, and we'll use this for lack of a better word, uh, ultimately defraud you or at minimum uh, mislead you and misrepresent. You, could you speak more to that, how that worked and, and what happened? Yeah, um, I'm going to bring in the profit and loss and EBITDA numbers because that's going to make it a very clear picture. You know, predatory lending and predatory financing is real. It's very real. Golden Corral told me if I didn't use TD Bank, that the deal was off. I had to use their bank because that bank knows um, the, the buffet business. Golden Corral and TD Bank then tell me I cannot build what's called an inline. An inline is a lot, it's a cheaper product or a cheaper location. I had to build a standalone store. TD Bank changed my cash contributions. And I'm going to bring it into like a, a mortgage so we can understand what cash contributions means. Cash contributions like your down payment. Okay, it's your down payment. My down payment amount was changed, I believe, almost four times. I thought I was paying a amount of money, ended up paying three times the amount that I thought I was going to be paying. Okay. Predatory lending and predatory finance uh, franchising is very, very real. They work as a group, okay? Golden Corral and TD Bank gave me my profit and loss numbers and my EBITDA numbers. Now, what does that mean? How does that affect me? It took away my ability to make an intelligent financial decision for me and my family. They were submitted and they were not my numbers. They were the numbers of the bank and the franchisor. When my loan was partially closed, I was then still requested to pay more money to TD Bank and TD Bank ignored their cushion of increase of three to 5%. And let me explain to you what that means. Every single SBA loan has what was called for three point two, but I had an error of prediction of use of three to five percent, meaning that I could go over three to five percent, or I could go under three to five percent without having to pay more money. 
it didn't stop TD Bank. It didn't stop them until I was drained to the point. If I did not, if I did not eat at Golden Corral or my children or my mother, Robert, I didn't have money to even pay a, a car note. I didn't have any money. I was poor. I went in heavy. When I got there, I was cash poor. That's uh, that's terrible. So predatory that's lending, terrible. yeah, predatory lending and predatory fi- uh, franchising is very real. They call it racketeering, but it's, yeah. it's predatory. It's not churning. It's pre- it, It's it's predatory because yeah. they knew they could steal from me, and they made me poor, so I couldn't resiliently fight against them after what they had planned on doing, which was to steal my store. Right. And, you know, you're, you're not the first person to, to bring this up, right? So it's not just you. This is a, a story that, that we unfortunately hear all too often. So let's get into that. You, you know, your store closing. And this is the, I, I mean, all things considered, which are just crazy. This is the absolute craziest part of the whole story. 51 days after all this money is dropped in, all this work is put in, and you know, people can't even begin to imagine how much work, and you alluded to some of it with the boards and speaking to people. I mean, man, we, we, we go through it. This is no easy feat. You're at this for years. You, you know, hurdle, obstacle, obstacle. You get this store open, and I'm going to throw some pictures up on the screen. It, it, it's a busy store. There's happy people. They're eating. Things are going good. 51 days later, they take your store away. You don't even have the option to sell it. They literally take your store from you in less than two months. What happened? Me losing the Golden Crown, Poughkeepsie, New York. I got a letter on my 20, I think it's the 23rd day of only being in business. And Golden Corral had said to me that they weren't able to get um, their royalties out of an account. And they were missing the last $15,000 of payment for the franchise license. SBA calculates the cost or the amount of money to go to the franchisor for the license. So that's basically paid by TD Bank. Golden Corral alleged that they couldn't get any money out. After a quick phone call with Golden Corral, we were able to remedy the situation and they were missing one part of the account number. So a matter of like a day or two, money was taken out. Um, In about a week or so, TD Bank paid the $15,000. And I was getting, I was, I received a letter which was titled First and Final Warning. Now, the reason why I say that, and this is super important, I'm not an employee. I'm an owner. I'm a franchisee. They treated me as if I was a worker that was on a 90-day um, review, okay? Right. You can't give me that letter. I, I, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Then I received the letter in March. I think it was the 21st, the 22nd of the year that closed me down, which was a few days after the letter in February, and it stated that your license is being terminated because of customer complaints and you lost a manager. Now, I had to fire my kitchen manager because he threatened to kill me. He threatened to kill me because I threatened to fire him because he had ordered things that weren't appropriate to be ordered. And as a result, I had a decrease in food items that were needed to run a day-to-day business. Let me give you an example. This kitchen manager ordered 200 plus pork butts and some pork butts within a 50 day period. He ordered 20 some thousand dollars in fruits and vegetables as well as eggs and little like creamers. He put it all in the freezer. You know what happens when you put fruits and vegetables and creamers and eggs in the freezer, Robert? It withers. It's unusable. So I lost $20,000 of supplies plus any profit I could make with the supplies. Golden Corral 
sent a manager down and instructed the kitchen manager to order those items and to place those trucks. The same truck that bodies were placed in during COVID-19. So what I'm saying is that it's super cold. All of the items, they would, <laughs> I couldn't use them. I couldn't use them. He also ordered over a hundred turkeys. It wasn't Thanksgiving. It wasn't Christmas. When I confronted my kitchen manager of what he had done to me and how he had basically sleep on the clock, there was one worker who had only been working at my store for less than three weeks that alleged I owed him $40,000 in back wages. Robert, that's impossible. Even if he slept there for three weeks, he still could make $40,000 in wages. I said, why did you have someone to work and to sleep on the clock? He became hostile. I said, you know what? I'm going to fire you. And he said to me, you can't fire me because I'm going to dot, dot, dot to you. He said, you're going to be fired. You're gone. He says, you're going to lose your store. I said, well, you know what? I have life. So I called the police. Two days later, my license was terminated. What sort of impact, and we've got into, you know, some of the detail as to how this impacts your life, but how, I can't even begin to imagine how this has changed, you know, where you're at to, to, to where you are now. Uh, can you get into some of those details, how that's impacted your life, which, you know, could potentially be a cautionary tale for anybody else who's out there who, you know, could potentially end up in, in a similar situation, just a buyer beware yeah. kind of story. Robert, I lost everything. You know, and I'm going to explain to you what that means. I had to find money to get back to my mother's house because I became homeless. My community of Newark, my son's school, regional day school, gave my son a tracking device. On one day of him coming to school, he ran away and we couldn't get him. And um, after that incident, they gave us a tracking department in Newark. I almost lost my son. Wow. Um, without help, without, without help of food banks and, um, and food stamps, this is so hurtful. You know, um, last year, Thanksgiving, I wouldn't have had a turkey, you know. Um, I cannot provide the therapies for both my children, who both don't speak, who are both in pull-ups, because I don't have any money, you know. I haven't been to therapy myself, because I'm, I'm physically disabled. I haven't been to therapy in about two and a half years. Wow. I used to walk with a cane, and now I often use a walker. You know, I am now pre-diabetic. Robert, I've never been pre-diabetic. I've never, even when I was pregnant with my second child at 43 years of age, I was not pre-diabetic. My hypertension is uncontrollable. So when I say I lost everything, you know, I can talk about the materialistic things. I can talk about not having a car. I can talk about, I don't even own a car. But I used to own many cars. I can talk about the fact that now I use um, New Jersey special needs for patients um, I don't have assistance. My children have run away, not just once, but several times. One time, Jester ran away, and he was near a lake in, um, in New Jersey. I thought he had jumped in. Robert, the word everything is not enough. 
what I've lost. I've almost lost my life. Um, I even committed, I even tried to commit suicide, thought about committing suicide. You know, the, my only um, goal right now and to have my day in court with Golden Corral and TD Bank. Right. Um, and Golden Corral to anyone. And I would never recommend TD Bank for an SBA loan. If you're not, if you look like me, my loss is too great. Yeah, I hear you. That's uh, such a, a sad story. And, you know, thanks for bringing it up. And I know it must be extremely difficult to delve into this, you know, and the impact and the stress that uh, that this have caused for sure. And, you know, from an overall press perspective, I'm, I'm not quite sure if Golden Corral and TD Bank could have, you know, picked worse press for themselves. And, uh, you know, just for the record, we did reach out to uh, both Golden Corral and TD uh, legal department. We didn't hear anything back. We you know, actively are inviting any rebuttals or anything they want to say. They've got a platform to speak as well, but they decided uh, for whatever reason not to not to comment on that. So um, at this point, sorry, you had something to say? Go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that, you know, they know they've made me so poor and they know that um, I would need a miracle to fight against them um, robustly. They know it was easy to steal from me. 51 days and over three point some million dollars, just not right. Yeah, It's not right. It's and not that's, right. that's the, uh, the sad situation that happens, you know, when somebody is completely tapped, they don't have the financial resources to go after, you know, the bad franchisors. And not that I'm saying, you know, Golden Corral is, is, is necessarily bad, allegedly, you know, just, uh, is what it is, but there's a lot of franchisors that are well aware that after the liquidated damages and after you, you know all of these financial commitments, the individual's not really in a position to uh, to go after them. So yeah, it's uh, it's sad but true. Did anybody, as you were going through the process at the beginning, uh, your lawyer, the franchise disclosure document, the FDD, uh, any Golden Corral, anybody at all, tell you that these things could happen to forewarn you that you know, hey. <laughs> this can happen. You should know that. I would say that wasn't their concern. They didn't, or it appeared that wasn't an important thing. My commercial lawyer in Georgia didn't say, hey, Sharon, that you could be homeless and you will lose. I would never. And not even in their book, it says you can lose everything you own, everything that you own, and you can become homeless. And um, it can happen to you. Yep. It's just, it, you know, Robert, I'm so sorry. It's just, it's so upsetting to me. You have no Imagine. idea. No need for apologies. I'm a provider. You know, I'm a winner. Um, me coming in to meet Golden Corral being pregnant and with a cane, it says that I am a winner. I'm a winner. And now I, the, the, the woman, but I to be the mother I need to be for my family. Uncomprehensible. It's uncomprehensible. It's it's just bad. I'm yeah, sorry. For sure. It's just no, horrible. not at all. If you want to take a moment, please, please completely, completely understand. No, it's okay. No, I, I'm fine. That um, I, I don't want to say this as a cliche, but you got to stay in your lane. You know, and you've got to believe in yourself more important than anyone else. Um, you know, I have a publishing company. And it's, it's a company that if I invested all of this money in my publishing company, I would have been a mega publishing, you know, company. Um, you've got to believe in yourself. And don't believe that someone else can do better than you, even though they have a resilient record of, of, of being a dominant player. They're a dominant player for themselves. They're not a dominant player for you, you know? So it's important to um, use what you have. I have a theory that God gives us certain gifts. 
right? That we can do better than anyone else and no one else can top us. And everyone has a gift and that gift is a natural resource to become super successful. And you can always reach into the pocket of God's gift and say, okay, I need to generate X amount of dollars or I need to achieve greatness. I don't care if you're the best hairstylist or if you're the best manager, the best uh, you know, chimney sweeper. God gave you a gift and you can, you can grab it and you can achieve greatness and you can achieve stability. And I shouldn't have forgotten that God is with me. You see, now this is kind of like emotional, but I prayed to God every hour on that hour when I was paralyzed at Kessler. And I said, God, if you can just help me, you know, if you just help me, you know, I will, you know, I will tell the world about your greatness. And I forgot. I forgot, Robert. Golden Corral and TD Bank was not my path. It was not my path. So I should have stayed in my lane and if I had stayed in my lane, I could have provided the care for my children and the lifestyle that my children need being disabled as well as myself. So the cautionary tale is that, you know, you got to be really careful about the franchise that you go into. Um, you've got to research if they've had any discrimination um, issues. The Golden Corral has page after page after page after page of EOC complaints, of EEOC lawsuits, and that alone should have said, this is not the right place for you. This, you know, believe what you see. Believe what people tell you about who they are. And Golden Corral told me who they are, you know? They're not for, it's just, it's not for me. And it's not for people. Like me. So I, I think people underestimate the, uh, you know, the draw and the, the allure of uh, franchising. And it's not just Golden Corral. Franchising as an industry is out there saying, hey, you can't fail. You can't lose. You've got such strength, such support, which is fine when it works, but it doesn't always work, right? And it, you certainly can't be faulted for, you know, buying into that whole vision, that, you know, American dream that, you know, you can be part of this supportive family, you can, you, you know, make all this money, you can, you know, you, you know, the vision that you had, and that's the vision that they try to sell. But unfortunately, it doesn't work out a lot of the times. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. You reminded me of something just now, yeah. um, as, as far as what happened to the store, uh, that ev eventually, once they took it away, that got sold to another franchisee who was already in the system. Is that right? That's right. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's right. It went to a Mr. Patel. And it's so funny. When I was um, in court, um, they said that Patel was like a pizza room manager and that he doesn't even own any Golden Corral. And, um, you know, I, I'm a believer that when you lie, you always attract flies, right? Because you smell like, I can't say the word, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll, well Patel up. was just yeah, Patel was just in the paper um, for allegedly stealing about two million dollars in PPE um, funds from the United States government for his golden corrals. You know, and the, the ironic thing is that uh, I took a look online and it looks like the Patel store has multiple infractions, including insects and rodents. They didn't have their store taken away so it seems like a bit of a double standard anything that you want to add before we wrap up and i think we should uh, i know you've got a gofundme page out there uh we're going to paint, yeah. put a link down below folks can help support you and your uh legal cause uh anything else you yeah, want the to add the, light, the franchise nightmare yeah right. the golden <laughs> crown franchise light, nightmare and right. it was a nightmare because no one invests their life savings and in 51 days um you're, you're kicked to the curb you're just kicked to the curb. No one, no one does that. No one, yeah. no one does that. That's not yeah. what you do. Robert, thank you. I appreciate the platform to tell my story. And I hope it makes a difference in different franchisees or possible franchisees and in, in, in buying a business. Um, you know, make sure it's the right route for yourself and your family and understand that um, 
you can lose everything. But I don't think any franchisee or franchisor would do what happened to me. In fact, I, uh, from my research, I'm the only one in U.S. history that this has happened to. So this is um, unusual. Yeah, it's 51 unusual. days. I mean, that, I've never heard anything like that before. It, right? It's just, uh, just crazy. Shiraz Henderson, thanks so much for taking the time to so meet much, with us Robert. today. Hang in there. Uh, viewers, head on over Franchise Nightmares GoFundMe page. Even five bucks, any little bit's going to help with the legal cause. We'll put the link down below. And thanks very much. You are listening to Franchise City. Interviews with franchisees.